there's a KVM inside this? The Nano KVM Risk 5 inside. Two USB cables, a jumper wire, the Nano KVM, and an ATXB board. This lets you remotely control a machine through USB and HDMI over the network. Let's talk about it and dive in. This thing is a tiny little compute cube, and it's RISC-V based. This includes an OLED screen so that you get a readout, and the boards and the interface and storage and the whole nine yards, and it is very, very aggressively priced. Less than $100 for the full kit. You can also get the light version, even shipped. It depends on where you are a little bit globally and everything else. The configuration that we're taking a look at here is the full Nano KVM kit, which includes, a, it seems like a resin printed uh, case, a heat sink, the Li Chi Risk V system, plus an HDMI CSI module, plus a USB-C interface, plus the ATX interface, the ATX front panel interface, which itself uses a USB-C connector, but is not actually USB-C. On one side of the Nano KVM, you've got USB-C power. There's a reserved serial port, and then there is also a network cable. This network interface is only 100 megabit. 100 megabit is all you need for a remote H.264 stream, right? MJPEG or H.264. At the time that I'm shooting this video, H.264 support, a little sketchy, MJPEG basically works fine. All the B-roll from this is just gonna be the out-of-the-box configuration for older software. Software is a developing story, but already the software is polished enough that you'll have a pretty good end user experience. Now, this is designed for an absolute maximum of 1080p 60. But understand, the RISC-V system here is positively anemic compared to its Raspberry Pi counterparts. Raspberry Pi, potentially you could run eight gigabytes, it's a full Linux distribution, etc., etc. What is running on this is what's called BusyBox. It's a very slim down installation of Linux. Nevertheless, this is implemented on a 32 gigabyte EMMC card and it's only using about a gig, gig and a half, depending on how you want to measure. And also you have the gig and a half for a little bit of breathing room to be able to do software updates. I was able to do a software update through the GUI and that actually worked as soon as I unboxed this. So it's like day zero software update. And by the time you get yours, there's definitely gonna be more and more software updates. There is uh, some imperfect USB compatibility. If you're using this KVM, KVM in the sense of remote control with a hardware KVM, which is designed for switching among multiple computers, uh, the USB interface is not compatible with just about every USB implementation on KVMs out there. And that is partly because this is a bit banged interface and partly because it's a composite device that does storage, mouse and keyboard all on one interface, colors a little bit outside the lines. That might possibly be fixable with a firmware update, but it would probably require a USB gadget on like the SPI bus or something like that, an, an optional peripheral, which is something that the Raspberry Pi project ran into and they implemented with a, a separate IC. So it is what it is. At this price point, just buy like four of them or five of them or six of them. I've actually ordered two more even ahead of publishing this evaluation because it's that good. I mean, for the price point. Now the other USB-C port, it's not actually a USB-C port, is designed for going to this Nano KVMB breakout board. And this is just a pin header and it comes with the cables that are designed to connect to the front panel header. And so your front panel header buttons will plug into this and this will plug into your motherboard. And what this lets you do is have the computer in this thing actually turn your computer on and off remotely which is pretty awesome. If you have a server that doesn't have HDMI, you can pick up a, an HDMI, a VGA to HDMI a adapter. Those are USB powered. So you're gonna have a lot of USB power in this setup, but you can go from VGA on like a server console to HDMI and then HDMI capture with this, you're good to go. Now I also mentioned this thing supports maximum 1080p 60. You can downsample that, which is a neat feature in the Nano KVM so that you're only sending, say, an 800 by 600 signal over the wire. Of course, it's gonna be blurry and hard to see, but for a remote console or like bootstrapping in an emergency situation, uh, yeah, that works fine. If you run 4K, there is an option for you. You can get a scaler is what they're called. This is pretty cool because it can take a 4K 60 signal in and then give you one or two 4K 60 signals out or 1920 by 1080 signals out or one of each. 
That works really well because if you notice the Nano KVM only has HDMI in, it doesn't have HDMI in and out. So if you combine the Nano KVM with a splitter scaler, you can pass through a 4K signal to a 4K display, but actually scale that 4K signal to 1080p on your Nano KVM. Now, yes, when you scale a 4K signal to 1080p, it's going to be a little blurry, it's gonna be a little hard to read, you might not be able to read really small text, but for something in a pinch, monitoring a benchmark or something like that remotely, that works shockingly well. That's how I use the Pi KVMs with hardware switch KVMs to switch among you know, four or eight input machines, but only have one Pi KVM module controlling the actual KVM switch. Because this platform is based on BusyBox and it's not a full Linux distribution, if you wanted to customize this solution, you're gonna have a little bit more of an uphill battle. This also isn't as polished as the Pi KVM, at least not yet. One of the nice things about the Pi KVM is that it's kind of hardened against corruption and errors. Um, like for example, when it boots the root file system, it boots it in a read-only configuration. That is a great way to make sure that the system stays preserved and that over time logging and that sort of thing. These ship, like I said, with a 32 gig eMMC configuration and it has multiple partitions. I also like that it is 32 gigabytes of eMMC that, you know, you got a lot of room to do stuff there. But fundamentally, this is not really a normal Linux distro. This is BusyBox. Whereas on a true Raspberry Pi, that's a full distro. You can do a lot with that. In some ways, this is a better fit than the Raspberry Pi 5 because the Raspberry Pi 5 regressed in some ways in terms of hardware encoders and decoders. This thing can actually do hardware H.265 4K at up to 30 FPS on the specifications. The software doesn't do that yet. There's no software implementation of that. I would love to see the Nano KVM software suite updated to include full H.265 streaming because we basically have H.265 uh, decode on pretty much all modern hardware of the last couple of years. And that would be a really killer feature for this application. Now the CSI module that does the HDMI capture in this probably not gonna do 4K easily, but maybe that would be an upgrade path for a CSI module in the future that does actually do 4K 30. Or you could combine that with a scalar type module that would scale 4K 60 down to 4K 30 if you need that. An add-on module that's on the order of like 30 to $50 for 4K capture is incredible. And let me tell you, there's not a lot of KVMs out there that can handle 4K 60 remote access as slick and cleanly as this software is. This is also all on GitHub. This software is better than commercial KVMs that do the same remote access. Anybody that's used like, you know, like Raritan or the, that software is all just from the dawn of time at this point. The experience that you get from this and Pi KVM is far more polished than vastly more expensive commercial offerings. The rough parts are that well, it's HDMI and you're gonna need some hardware to adapt VGA, mini display port in the case of new modern, you know, uh, server remote out of band management interfaces, whatever into HDMI. But the reason it's HDMI is because the HDMI chipsets are way cheaper than the other chipsets that do the same function. Like it makes sense to just use HDMI, even though you might have a little bit of an uphill battle to adapt whatever into HDMI, which is wild that it's like that, but that's just because it's a game of volume. I want to kvetch this a little bit, but RISC-V is a fun and a fun toy, but generally there's a lot of other things out there that will perform better, unless you have hardware that will accelerate the thing that you're trying to do and you're just using RISC-V as like the control plane. And that's what we have here with the Nano KVM, like the hardware encode and all that. That's great, that works fantastically well, and the RISC-V interface is a little bit like a control plane to stuff that you're getting accelerated in silicon, which is how it can use so little power and how the OLED screen is fantastic for showing you the IP address and how much CPU is being used and what sort of HDMI input signal the thing is seeing. That's all just fantastic, fantastic aspects of the software, fantastic. The fact that you can do that on RISC-V usefully and it doesn't really bog down all that much is great. But at the same time, they did have to make some sacrifices because it is RISC-V versus you know, a true full fat Linux distro experience that you would get on something with a little bit more horsepower. But this still has a reasonable amount of horsepower. A little worried about that 6.x load average while I'm running 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS, but in terms of the experience using it through the web GUI, even with the high load average, it didn't seem to cause excessive lag or anything like that. Well, I can't believe how fast they're moving with the software on this new Nano KVM. They've already added tail scale support. 
Now I suggested that they move to a packaging system like OPKG or Yocto, something like Yocto where you've got some built-in package management. Uh, the model for OpenWRT is a good exemplar for how they manage things, but still in a really tiny memory footprint. But there have been basically weekly software updates. They're really spending a lot of time to get all their ducks in a row. They added support for things like TailScale and WireGuard and other VPNs running on this. So you could enroll this device on your TailNet and then be able to connect to it from anywhere, even behind carrier grade NAT, because that's just how we roll with TailScale. It is really nice to see that. But I also want to see these updates on a GitHub repository or somewhere like that. It's just a little too easy that I can go into the, the uh, gear menu and do download update and then it downloads an update. Like, uh, what if I want to roll my own, like de deploy my own distro from source on this, you know, because software supply chain, I don't know. So now I've got the full skinny on the software stack on this thing. Short version is now it's open source. So I'm shooting this little insert to talk about the software stack on the Nano KVM. Rui Carmel t turned me on to this blog post, which has a full teardown. Now the firmware on this is encrypted, but it uses a hard coded secret, which has been dumped helpfully on this, on this blog. So you can decrypt the firmware and make sure that it's clean. There's no back doors. There doesn't seem to be anything untoward in the firmware, which is awesome. It's also RISC-V based. Now the bad news is, uh, yeah, they're leaving a lot of performance on the table. I mean, it's RISC-V. RISC-V is not a super optimized microarchitecture yet, but there is more performance they could be squeezing out of this. Also, if you're a Go fanatic, this is a great Go project. 13 meg web server plus a bunch of other stuff, but a lot of Go source code. And now it has full support for tail scale and a whole bunch of other plugins. It's very nice to see that. And they've also added the sources for most of this, as far as I can tell, to GitHub. So you can build your own binary for it and potentially sign it and set your own secret and do some customization there. You could do some really interesting things with this as a platform. Now, it still doesn't have as many features and is not as flexible as a full, you know, like a Raspberry Pi CM based implementation. If you have a Raspberry Pi with a CSI module on it, that is not as functional as something based around a Raspberry Pi with a compute module, namely 1080p60, but there are a lot of other hidden annoyances when you go with the Raspberry Pi based version as opposed to the Raspberry Pi compute module based version. The compute module based stuff tends to be much less problematic. And so there are Pi KVM based things that run with that. Having this be open now, there is a possibility that you could run PyKVM firmware on it. So the firmware on this is not PyKVM and not PyKVM derived, as far as I can tell. It is its own license on GitHub. And so if you wanted to run the PyKVM firmware on this, that may be possible. There are probably people working on that. But as of today, those are two different things, two different pieces of implementation. But still, for the price point for this thing is at, it is a super aggressive price point. Very, very inexpensive 1080p60, hugely impressive piece of kit, especially with the VPN functionality and everything else. At times you can feel the CPU bogging down, especially if you add some of those plug-in features, but hey, this is still a very, very impressive piece of kit. And the software part that I was a little worried about in the beginning, is coming up aces. So I see no reason not to load up on like a dozen of these. I want this level one has been a quick look at the Nano KVM Risk 5 full kit, but you can also just get the bare bones thing and print your own case for it. Uh, I'm, I'm less sold on the ATX B board interface, but this is a great option if you need full remote control. I really hope that they're able to fix the um, USB HID interface thing so that you can plug this into things other than a computer for keyboard and mouse simulation, like a, like, a, like a KVM switch to switch between multiple computers so that you only have to have one of these to control four or eight machines, depending on how fancy your KVM is. Uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath that that's gonna get fixed quickly because that is a very niche use case, but that does work on other products. Just throwing that out there. And what is level one, uh, this is, this is uh, I, I, like I said, I already bought two and I'll probably end up buying more because you can just hand these things out like candy. All right, I'm signing out and I'm gonna go hang out in the level one forums. If I miss anything, you want me to test anything in particular, let me know, be glad to do it. You gotta hang on to these for a long time. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.